today uh, an impairment standard for uh, alcohol use, uh, which is 0 0.08 across the country. Has any similar standard uh, been set for uh, impairment for marijuana use while driving? No, sir. Uh, do you know of any uh, studies uh, being conducted currently that would uh, be geared towards setting a scientifically valid uh, impairment level for uh, drivers using marijuana? We're, we're actively engaged in research uh, in this area. There's uh, the, the impairment, impairment by drugs is not well understood, and of course there's no scientifically accepted standard for it, but we, we are actively engaged in research in this area and, and, and attempting, in addition to that, attempting to uh, develop technological devices that law enforcement could use uh, to test oral fluids to determine impairment. Now, you're aware of the fact that uh, recreational use of marijuana is legal in at least six states now, and medical use of marijuana, uh, or THC, is, uh, is also uh, permissible in a number of other states. Do you believe that it is um, important for the federal government to come up with a standard uh, for impairment? Uh, because of uh, the fact that marijuana or THC remains in the blood for, or remains in, detectable in a urine uh, sample for 30 days, for blood, I think seven days, saliva, I'm not sure. There might be some Fourth Amendment issues with, in, in terms of search and seizure with respect to that. But, um, do you believe that it's important that the federal government come up with a uh, impairment standard for marijuana? Yes, sir. Since uh, 2007, we've seen a 50 percent increase in marijuana usage, uh, and so uh, we we think it's we th we know what we do know about marijuana uh, is that it impairs judgment, it impairs your driving ability, particularly with respect to uh, reaction time, and so. Uh, we think it is important to develop a scientifically based threshold for impairment so we can get uh, unsafe drivers off the road. Certainly, but for someone who used marijuana one time 28 days ago and then they're subjected to a uh, urine test, uh, that doesn't show impairment uh, at the time that the uh, person was driving. That's correct. So what we're, we're looking for is specific to impairment, not just usage, but impairment at the time of driving. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Denzar, uh, more than 15 years ago, NTSB recommended that all new commercial vehicles be manufactured with collision warning systems. More recently, the board has recommended that all new commercial vehicles be equipped with automatic emergency braking. Last Congress, I introduced the Safe Roads Act, which would require that all new commercial vehicles are equipped with both of these important tech, uh, safety technologies. Can you discuss the importance of collision warning systems and automatic emergency braking, especially on heavy vehicles that can weigh 80,000 pounds or more? And Mr. Danielson, if you could give me uh, your opinion on that as well. Thank you, Congressman. I greatly appreciate that question. Uh, the NTSB, as you mentioned, has been advocating and has been recommending uh, these type of safety tools uh, be in uh, vehicles, especially heavy vehicles, for many years. And that's because of the crash investigations that we've conducted. When a heavy vehicle is in a crash, and sometimes it's a multi-vehicle crash, the results are catastrophic. And we know that uh, these collision avoidance technologies and these automatic emergency braking uh, can and will reduce the number of these fatal crashes. So we support uh, more movement in this area, um, and we also, that's in combination with our other commercial vehicle safety recommendations involving um, uh, fatigue management and uh, speeding. So it's all part of a, uh, a, uh, a group of uh, safety efforts. But uh, those, those uh, technologies are something we've long advocated and we will continue to advocate for. Thank you. Briefly, Mr. Danielson. Uh, we agree. Uh, 
crash avoidance technologies uh, have tremendous potential to save lives, particularly in heavy vehicles, and that's why we've created the standard for electronic stability control. Um, you might have heard that we uh, convened a group of uh, automakers last year to uh, get their agreement to make uh, automatic emergency braking standard in all light vehicles by model year uh, uh, 2022, which is several years before we would have been possible using just a notice and comment rulemaking approach. And we, we anticipate that this technology will expand beyond the light vehicle fleet eventually. Thank you. Are uh, you back? Mr. Schmucker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning.